The question is that Amendment 8064.1 in the name of Neil Bibby, which seeks to amend Motion 8064 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out business programme, be agreed. Members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. Point of order, Martin Whitfield. Very grateful, Presiding Officer. Um, the app failed to connect. I would have voted yes in that vote. Um, I can confirm that your vote has oh. been recorded, Mr. Whitfield. The result of the vote on amendment number 8064.1 in the name of Neil Bibby is yes 54, no 64. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The next question is that motion 8064 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business programme be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Can I just confirm that we are all agreed? Thank you. The motion is therefore agreed. The next item of business is consideration of Parliamentary Bureau Motion 8065 on approval of an SSI. And I ask George Adam, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you, Minister. I call on Edward Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I would like to make clear at the outset that whilst I'm a member of the Net Zero Energy and Transport Committee, I want to make clear that I'm speaking on behalf of my party. I will begin by stating the obvious. The drinks industry are watching the actions of this government with absolute despair. At the same time, the outgoing First Minister is urging producers to sign up to the top deposit return scheme. Her three potential replacements are already promising to change changes to it. Kate Forbes has even warned that the scheme could cause economic carnage. But that doesn't seem to have discouraged Lorna Slater, though. The Greens are pressing ahead with this SSI, whether the SNP like it or not, which makes one wonder whether it is the tail that's now wagging the dog in this coalition government. Now, this parliament is being asked to support an SSI that allows penalties to be levied on a scheme that is not yet in place and has already suffered with two delays, and of which only 16% of producers across Scotland have registered with. At the weekend, the Minister didn't even know whether the small drinks producers would be exempt for a further year, but today she appears to want to set up the police force to enforce the scheme. Now, that sounds a lot like putting the cart before the horse a logistical nightmare which the Minister is obviously seems to be drawing inspiration from. Now, let me turn to the nuts and bolts of this SSI. Yes, I will. Uh, Colin Smith. Smith. I'm grateful for Ted Edward for taking that intervention, and I recognise that this SSI does cover more than, than, than the deposit return scheme, but since it was agreed by the Net Zero Committee, it has become increasingly clear, as Edward Martin has highlighted, uh, no more so than today's um, statement, that there do remain more questions and answers with the current plans for DRS. We heard today, for example, that fewer than 16 per cent of producers have signed up. We do not know well, <laughs> No, the member cannot make an intervention on an intervention. Thank you. 
Mr Smith. I think, um, I think like presiding officer, the deposit return scheme, uh, the Greens are making the standing orders up as they go along. We don't know, we don't know yet whether there will be the delay for small producers that Labour has been called for, and we don't even know if there will be an exemption from the Internal Market Bill. So does Edwin agree that the Government should pause this SSI, bring it back when they've got the confidence of Scotland's small producers with a scheme that will deliver our environmental commitments, but if we're serious about a just transition, which the Greens used to be, also delivers for Scotland's consumers and Scotland's small businesses? Edward Mountain. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Member for, for that intervention, because I think I well, I clearly agree with him that the deposit ret return scheme is something that we should be encouraging, providing it works properly, which is why when this SSI came before the committee, I had a chance to consider it. I had a chance to consider what it contained and why I abstained when I voted on it. But now, in, light, in the cool light of day and having had a chance to further consider it, I feel that it is no, no longer appropriate. Uh, if I can finish this section... I, I will take an intervention, Presiding Officer, uh, is why I no longer consider it, consider it appropriate to, to move on. I, I'll give way to Mr Ruskell. Mark Ruskell. Thank you, Member, for taking an intervention. I wondered if in his capacity as convener of the committee he could confirm to the Chamber that the Labour Party actually voted for this SSI when it came to the committee. <laughs> Can I ask um, Mr Mountain to wind up in, in response? Uh, I, I will try and wind up, if I may, but could I just say at the outset I'm not going to speak in this debate as the convener of the committee. I'm speaking as an individual with serious concerns. Now, let me just be clear that what this SSI is doing is making sure that SEPA have the powers to impose penalties and there is no option for anyone to appeal this process. And I have to say, as I said at the committee, I really question whether giving SEPA the responsibility is appropriate. Ever since SEPA suffered the data hack, it has struggled to get back on its feet again. That impacted the, ability, the agency's ability to regulate the industries that they effectively should be doing at the moment. Giving SEPA more powers and more responsibilities when they are under serious pressure on a scheme that is already appearing to be a disaster would fully further compound that disaster. Presiding officer, next month this parliament will have a new first minister. Lorna Slater and the Greens may or may not be in government and the deposit return scheme may be delayed or or actually go through a current Mr Mountain, revamp. I must ask you to conclude at this point we are already um, two minutes over the, the allotted time. OK, thank you. I will conclude. That's why I'm not supporting the SSI, and nor is my party. Thank you. I call on Lorna Slater. Signing officer. The Environmental Regulation Enforcement Measures Scotland Amendment Order 2023 provides SEPA with access to civil enforcement measures for offences in two existing pieces of legislation, data reporting regulations that enable upcoming packaging extended producer responsibility reforms and the amending DRS regulations passed by this parliament last year, which added one new offence in response to calls from industry. SEPA is already responsible for the enforcement of both EPR and DRS regulations, but currently, where an offence is committed under either set of regulations, their only option is to report the matter to the Procurator Fiscal for criminal prosecution. This technical instrument provides more flexibility to SEPA. It adds these offences to the existing list of the 2015 enforcement order, meaning SEPA can turn to civil sanctions where appropriate. This makes a substantial difference to SEPA's enforcement options. Criminal prosecution through the courts takes time and the results are uncertain. Upon conviction for these offences, a court can impose a fine of up to £10,000 on summary conviction or an unlimited fine on conviction of indictment. In contrast, the values for fixed monetary policies associated with the civil sanctions, I'm going to finish my speech, with civil sanctions are £300, £600 or £1,000 with the amounts of the penalty linked to the seriousness of the offence. Opposing this instrument therefore means calling for stricter enforcement approaches for businesses than what we're aiming to bring in. Let me give you an example. Regulation 23.3 in the Packaging Waste Data Reporting Regulation says that SEPA may give an information notice requiring a person with data collection or reporting obligations to supply data within a set period of time. Regulation 28.5 makes it an offence for the person not to comply with the written notice unless they have a reasonable excuse. 
With this enforcement measure instrument in place, SEPA has the option of imposing a fixed monetary penalty of £600. Without it, SEPA's only option is to enforce compliance would be to submit a report to the Procurator Fiscal in anticipation of criminal prosecution. I made this clear to the Committee on 7th of February and welcomed Monica Lennon's comments yep. which supported the flexible flexibility and proportionality that is being provided by this approach. Amending the 2015 enforcement order does not change the obligations placed on producers for either DRS or EPR. It provides a flexible and proportionate option for enforcing those obligations which will benefit businesses. Opposing it is illogical and would result in businesses who fall foul of the regulations facing criminal sanctions. I can't believe that that is the outcome that members seriously want and I would encourage them to support the motion. I move the motion. Thank you. The question on this motion will be put at decision time. The next item of business is consideration. Excuse me, I cannot hear myself speak because of other conversations that are ongoing. The next item of business is consideration of Parliamentary Bureau Motion 8066 on approval of an SSI. And I ask George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer. I move. Thank you. The question on this motion will be put at decision time, and there are seven questions to be put as a result of today's business. The first is that motion 8007, in the name of Tom Arthur, on Local Government Finance Scotland Order 2023, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Can I confirm, are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote, and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on motion 8007 in the name of Tom Arthur is yes 84, no 4. There were 30 abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed. The next question is that amendment 8053.2 in the name of Sandesh Gilhani, which seeks to amend motion 8053 in the name of Kevin Stewart on dementia strategy, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote. Members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. <laughs> the 
The result of the vote on amendment number 8053.2 in the name of Sandesh Gulhani is yes 55, no 64. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The next question is that amendment 8053.1 in the name of Paul O'Kane, which seeks to amend motion 8053 in the name of Kevin Stewart on dementia strategy, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 8053.1 in the name of Paul O'Kane is yes 23, no 93. There were three abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The next question is that motion 8053 in the name of Kevin Stewart on dementia strategy be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. The next question is that motion 8037 in the name of Maggie Chapman on behalf of the Scottish Parliament corporate body on appointment of members of the Standards Commission for Scotland be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. The next question is that motion 8065 in the name of George Adam on approval of an SSI be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on motion 8065 in the name of George Adam is yes 62, no 55. There were no abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed. The next question is that motion 8066 in the name of George Adam on approval of an SSI be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. That concludes decision time and we will now move on to members business in the name of Craig Hoy. Excuse me, Mr Hoy, we'll, we'll be a moment or two.